12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Ignition sequence start. Engines on. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All engines on. Apollo 15 was launched 50 years ago on July the 26th, 1971. It was a relatively big step from the previous three missions. As President Nixon stated, it would be the most ambitious scientific exploration in space at that time. The three astronauts were Commander David Scott, Command Module Pilot Al Warden, and Lunar Module Pilot Jim Irwin. The Lunar Rover was an electrically driven, bare-bones car to allow the astronauts to cover much greater distance on the moon than the previous three flights could accomplish. This is really a rock and roll ride, isn't it? Never been on a ride like this before. Oh, boy. Uh, it had a top speed of about 8 miles an hour, although I think in later flights they actually cranked that up to about 11 miles an hour. Scott and Irwin spent three days exploring the Apennine Hadley region in the Lunar Rover. Uh, there's actually a plaque on the lunar rover vehicle that was left on the moon that says man's first wheels on the moon. The heavy focus on science for Apollo 15 was its primary feature. It was achieved two ways. One, of course, with the lunar rover vehicle on the moon to gather more lunar data. And secondly, the command service module carried a sim bay of scientific instruments that allowed Al Warden to gather many photographs and much data as he circled the moon for his three days in orbit. One of the interesting experiments that uh, Scott performed on the moon was to demonstrate uh, Galileo's theory that two objects will always drop at the same rate in an airless environment. For our Falcon, and I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Scott and Irwin, while they were doing their lunar rock studies on the moon, came across a single rock that was determined to be over four billion years old. It was called the Genesis Rock. Scott and Irwin spent over 18 hours on the moon, the longest time of any of the Apollo missions at that time, and gathered 170 pounds of lunar material to bring back they also set out the Apollo Lunar Experiments Package. In a private moment, Commander David Scott laid a small aluminum statue of an astronaut on the moon to memorialize the 14 astronauts that had died in the US and Soviet programs. The lunar rover had a TV camera on it, and for the first time, we were privileged to see the ascent stage take off from the moon. After Scott and Irwin were back in the command module, they continued to orbit the moon for two days, and during that time deployed the particle and field satellite. During the flight back to Earth, one of the most important tasks required of the crew was for Al Warden to EVA from the command module and capture the cassettes that recorded all the data that he'd accumulated during his orbit to the moon. That was the first time at 197,000 miles from Earth that a man had ever done a deep space EVA. During re-entry, the burning reaction control system fuel burned through the risers of one of the chutes. And that chute streamed and effectively became about one-fifth of its normal capacity. Apollo 15 landed on two chutes. It was designed to do that, but it did mean a hard landing, but a safe landing. Apollo 15 broke several records. The first use of the lunar rover, the first deep space walk by L. Warden, the heaviest payload in lunar orbit at 107,000 pounds, and the longest crewed lunar mission of 295 hours. Apollo 15 achieved all of its objectives and accumulated a wealth of scientific information.